This is an example of the type of surfing that I do, but I'm not here today to speak about surfing because there is something of far greater importance that exists beyond those waves. The fabric of my being was woven of the sea. At two weeks old, my parents put my feet in the water for the first time. At two years old, I experienced the incredible exhilaration of gliding across the surface of a wave on a board with my father. The magic of the ocean encapsulated every fiber of my being, became my passion, created an arena for self-exploration, physically, mentally, spiritually, and it became a guide, a virtuous guide in my life. And I can say that I have thrived in this world because the ocean was always my guide. At 20 years old, I had the opportunity to start traveling the world, turning that passion of surfing into an occupation, to set off on the globe, go surf these majestic waves that I'd seen since I was a child in the magazines, it was an absolute dream. I immediately went to those destinations that I had seen, places I knew to harbor waves of majestic beauty, like the one behind me, fantastic beaches in Mexico, exotic atolls in Indonesia. But when I stepped foot onto those beaches, I was forced to observing a very harsh reality that in the short time, the few short years since they had been discovered, become popular, an influx of tourism, that those pristine waves that I had seen and that I was seeking, they turned into anything but. The pressures of modern society, a lack of infrastructure, Lineups became crowded, waves polluted, beaches strewn with trash and plastic. So what did I do? I turned away and I said, you know what, I'm going to go travel somewhere else, far off the beaten path, far from the pressures and byproducts of modern society coastlines that I knew that nobody, or was very likely nobody had ever stepped foot on before in search of perfect waves and solitude. Both of those things I found, but upon reaching those distant shores, I was again forced into a very harsh reality that those same byproducts, plastic, modern society, had long since beaten me to those beaches long since beaten me to those beaches. How could that be? Well, the stuff is floating in from hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles away. It became extremely disheartening time and again, beach after beach. It's a common theme. And at this point, I realized that I could no longer turn away and ignore it because there was no such place, no such thing as away. Couldn't turn a blind eye out of sight, out of mind, could not be justified because everywhere I went, I could see it right there. So when I began traveling at that point, started organizing local beach cleanups, educating communities, but really in the end, I knew it to be just a reactionary measure to a much bigger problem. That as long as we continue to produce, consume, dispose of this in the irresponsible way that we had been, that there was gonna be no end of sight in this problem. But don't get me wrong, cleaning up is so very important. It creates a very tangible, visceral, visual awareness, platform for education, but it's not the solution. Those years traveling, I witnessed communities that had been living sustainably blissfully within the cycles of nature, struggling to get by, the degradation of waves, coastlines. It was that point that I knew that those experiences that I had as a child that created that vision and dream, that guidance that I used to navigate my way through life, that if we continued down this path, that next generation 
they wouldn't have that opportunity that I did. The good fortune that we have had here and now to experience the ocean in all of its majesty and beautiful gifts that it has to offer. And this wasn't about pointing fingers, as Cyril said, blame, shame. It doesn't do anybody good. It's simply about accepting responsibility here and now. Where in my life, for a long time, my priority was riding waves, traveling and surfing waves. That was my dream from a child. But now it's taken on a much different context. That within my life, yes, I still do that. But at the same time, priorities have shifted. And I realize that I can harmonize what it is that I love doing, what I'm passionate about, my job. And I could also make an impact and a difference. That now it's not just riding waves, but wherever I go, taking a moment to stop and think how and where can I create a wave, a wave of change, a wave of education, awareness, all of which ultimately, hopefully guiding those who I'm coming across to making that change within their own lives. People think, oh, it's impossible, too big of a task. Changing the world is impossible. I don't think so. If only every single individual were to understand that changing the world simply starts by changing ourselves, our habits. And in this case, thank you. And in this case, our dependency and infatuation with the material we use for but a few minutes and carries on through the world wreaking havoc on the natural environment. That's crazy to me. So this wave of change, something that everybody plays a part in. The ocean is an incredible metaphor for life in so many different ways. Ocean's always changing, we must always change. Every single molecule of water in the ocean is interconnected, and so must we be to stand together, uniform, as one human family. If we are ever going to solve this, every individual out here has a responsibility and a role to play in it. So let's ride this wave of change together for our oceans and for our future. Thank you guys.